Hi guys, I've been asked to share even more skincare tips. So since I'm turning 30 in a few months time, I will summarize the main habits or mindset that I picked up from Korean girls when I was on my study exchange at the age of 21, which pay off big time for my skin today. Let's start. Number one, skin first, makeup second. This trend is slowly reaching Europe, but about 10 years ago, when I first heard about it, it was a brand new thing to me. So while in Europe it was all about hiding imperfections, having as full coverage foundation as possible, everything was supposed to be matte, in Asia it was exactly opposite. At that time, the CC creams and DD creams were being introduced, which meant even less coverage than already very light covering BB creams. It meant your skin had to be very good in the first place in order for these light foundations to look okay at all. When I picked my first BB cream, it didn't look on me quite like it did on the girls. And that's when I've been told about all the things that they do and it's very very different to what we did in Europe. This included double cleansing, multi-step skincare routine, masking with sheet masks, religiously using SPF. I started paying attention to things that I've never even thought about before, like having a dewy skin, like maintaining the face shape in a desired shape by face massage, like uh, adding the puffiness in some areas and reducing the volume of other areas on the face. Applying those learnings, I believe, pays off for me today and it made wearing a makeup an option rather than a necessity. Number two, anti-aging doesn't mean anti-wrinkle. In Europe, the word anti-aging pretty much equals anti-wrinkle. Whatever it is that has to do with age usually targets women over 30, while in Asia those terms mean something very different and I think it's a very smart, clear division between these two. In Asia, anything that moisturizes the skin has vitamin C, collagen, snail mucus, even whitening products, even products with SPF, all of this can be thrown into anti-aging bucket. Anti-aging products can be found even for teenagers because it does what it's supposed to do, which is preventing the aging, preventing the changes from occurring. While anti-wrinkle products are for already existing damages, the wrinkles it's not just a change on top of your skin. They started long, long time ago by destruction of the structure within the skin. And that change could happen when you were 13, 14 years old, staying in the sun for too long. Once this happens, this is irreversible. That's why there is such a huge emphasis on anti-aging products. So about the age of 21, I've adopted anti-aging care for my skin, even though my friends back in Europe were rolling their eyes when they heard that I'm using products with elastin and collagen and Q10 because it's just too early, according to European standards. Anti-wrinkle products in Korea usually come in a shape of um, tubes that has a pointy end so you can apply it in the very specific areas that need this action because those products usually contain very strong concentrated ingredients that help to properly plumb up the areas that are already damaged. Number three, dry doesn't always mean dehydrated skin. Someone might have an oily skin that's dehydrated or a dry skin that's properly hydrated. So I've learned that the moist level of the skin depends on how well it's hydrated from deep inside. Consistently keeping the moisture level high from within is the best anti-aging practice and it definitely pays off in the long run. This concept I adopted straight away and since using it for the first time, I have been seeing a great result for the last nine years. My favorite best way to achieve it is to use humectants straight out of the shower. I'm using a favorite Hada Labo that you're probably sick of hearing me mentioning because I talk about it in every video. Then uh, using an essence in between the moisturizers. This is something that's very hard to find in Europe, uh, so I definitely recommend to try out one of the Korean essences. And using a hydrating toner that doesn't contain alcohol. If that sounds too much, then as a minimum, I recommend to use at least one product with humectants in your skin diet. Number four, use moisturizing masks and use them often. When I was a teenager, the only masks I was aware of were the clay masks or any kind of 
drying uh, sebum reducing masks while the mindset I needed to adopt from uh, Asia was to use very hydrating very moisturizing masks uh, they like the form of sheet masks but that's not the only option the bottom line was to start seeing masks as a mean to increase the hydration of the skin especially deep from within rather than treating them as a quick fix for imperfections that show on the skin surface Today my favorite are actually Japanese masks called Lulu Lun. I love that they come in a multi packet which is environmentally friendly and um, there is one called My Beauty Diary with black pearl. It leaves this lovely shade on the skin but it's just quite hard to get. Number 5. Ditch the alcohol so half of my teenage cupboard was filled with cosmetics with alcohol from you know, Clerasil, Clean and Clear, all of these harsh products that were supposed to bring my teenage skin back to balance. Uh, what I've learned in uh, Korea, alcohol is a big no-no in cosmetics because it's simply drying the skin. Instead of drying the life out of your pimples, they believe in moisturizing and bringing your skin back to its optimal level because your skin has natural ways to fight the bacteria and if it's kept in a balanced state then it will naturally protect against spots. If more than this is needed then in the Korean cosmetics you can find the AHA and BHA acids, some tea tree oils or uh, fermented yeast is known for reducing inflammation as well. You might have seen before that I actually do keep one Clearasil uh, product, it's multi-action cleansing pads, but I only use them in extreme situations when I have a total <laughs> rush all over my face. Number six, cute freckles? Not quite. I remember when I was a kid, everybody was admiring my freckles. When sun properly hits my face, I get them um, you know, around the nose and here on the cheeks. One thing I needed to change my mindset of uh, when I met Korean girls was realizing that this isn't a cute thing, it actually is a sign of sun damage. We all know Asians are quite strict when using SPF, but that is not enough. I needed to learn how to remove the existing discolorations because age spot uh, happen when there is a buildup of um, untreated, unremoved, <laughs> accumulated melanin in some spots on your face. So again, Korea comes with products and ingredients that help to keep melanin in the skin under control and uh, one of my favorite ones include kojic acid, either cream or a soap. I have both of them and you often ask whether I still use it. I do, I do, but right now uh, it's a winter in Scotland so I don't have any sun exposure. <laughs> so it's, I'm not using it right now, but generally I am using it. Other cosmetics can contain arbutin or even vitamin C. I recently picked up a serum from Claire's which uh, surprised me in a really nice way because it helped to fade out some of the uh, like spot marks I've already had on the skin. Number seven, white is okay. A big disclaimer, this is not to glorify any color of the skin. I hope you know me enough to know that I'm not this kind of person who does that. This was a change of the mindset I needed to adopt because back in Europe, especially in my home country in Poland, having a tan is a thing. <laughs> uh, and if you don't, you're pretty much being picked on that you look like a ghost. I needed to learn that health should come first and going to sunbed or staying long times in the sun is certainly not a good way to have a healthy skin. Thankfully these days this trend is changing in Europe but a touch of tan is still desirable. In my head I needed to learn that there is nothing wrong with being pale white. For everyone concerned about vitamin D production I'm not saying not to go to the sun at all. I've adopted a policy not to stick my face, my neck and back of my hands to the direct sun because those areas are hit by UV rays anyway on a daily basis as UV rays penetrates even the thickest clouds. The vitamin D can be produced when the sun hits your back or back of your legs or front of your legs. By the way, last year on holidays in Poland I visited my uncles who were elderly and they kept saying that I look unhealthy, I look like a ghost and they were trying to kick me off to the beach just because there is still this mindset that a tan is healthy and a good thing. Number eight, know your ingredients. 
by learning all these tricks and Asian techniques I've learned more about ingredients and these days I'm just simply not believing what the producer says until I see it at the back of the product in the ingredients list. My discovery of the last year or so of the brand that has a very good concentrated natural and really working products and ingredients is a brand Sidmul. It's not like the most popular Korean brand. I think it's gaining popularity just now, but it has a lot of interesting, very simple products. I really like their products because most of them that I've tried um, are making a real difference to the skin. I'm not saying all, but most of them. On my wish list, there is their serum with propolis. I'm just uh, reading about what this ingredient can bring to the skin. So that was like a high level overview of the skincare changes I've adopted when I've learned about Asian standards. If you haven't heard about some of them before, I encourage you to read more about them, to dive into them, because they're certainly making a difference, certainly have a potential to make a difference. Um, have a good day, have an awesome skincare discovery journey, uh, and take care. Bye bye!